I'm just bringing it a little bit back to the practical size and, and just showing you a little bit what's actually happening, uh, which is also quite interesting to see that uh, the alternative fuels are there, but we are, uh, we are continuing doing something and, and it's going to or is already happening. Thank you. Um, I will basically not talk about LNG today. <laughs> As, uh, but um, a focus on the LPG uh, side. Um, maybe not all of you are aware that uh, Wärtsilä gas solution is a quite big part of Wärtsilä. It's, uh, it's a substantial amount uh, uh, compared to the overall value um, proposition Wärtsilä have. Uh, the, the reason you don't know them us that well is that uh, you know Wärtsilä as an engine manufacturer. Uh, but um, you will see more of us, and, and we, uh, uh, we are one of the places where Vatsla is, is putting focus at the moment. Uh, just for interest, uh, this is uh, a bit of our history, but uh, if you look at uh, uh, the slide here, in, in 2013, uh, we, uh, we actually started supplying our systems to a series of ethylene ethane carriers. And when they was out sailing in 2015, 2016, they was already fueling by ethane. Um, compared to what, what Paul is talking about, that was on our Wärtsilä four-stroke engine. But they have been sailing since 2016 on uh, ethane uh, with very, very good results and, and, and with very beneficial cost for the charter. Also, um, in, in 2018, we, we took the first order on supplying LPG fuel system. Uh, there, there's nothing kind of of these new fuels that fits all. So uh, there, there, there has to be interaction between the suppliers, the, the, the engine manufacturers, and, and the customer, what is fitting your vessel. Uh, and same as on LNG as fuel, basically started with the LNG carriers. It was a natural starting point because you already had LNG on board. Uh, LPG as gas starts now with LPG carrier as fuel because it's already there with all the benefits that gives. The, this, uh, I'm not going to discuss this uh, lengthy, everybody knows it, but the, the orange uh, part here shows the big leap that is expected from us. Everybody expects that in 2050 we reduce the CO2 emission with 50%, and, and there's various ways of coming there, but, but it's going to be a huge leap for a lot of people. Uh, and, and a lot of new technology has to be in place to manage it. Uh, this is just a very simplified uh, uh, list where we, where we kind of look at the fossil fuels that we have today and we're going downwards uh, looking at how it can do. And this is basically a transition where we're going from now the HFO uh, with the scrubbers, with compliant fuel, uh, which is partly reducing some of the issues, uh, to alternative fuels, which is reducing the emissions a little bit more, but not in the, in the great extent as, as expected uh, going forward. Uh, and in the end, we have to end up with no fossil fuels. And no fossil fuels has to be then produced of renewable power sources. Uh, we, have, we are part of one team now that is looking at this both towards hydrogen production but also uh, ammonia production. Hydro is, is very involved, trying to look at how they can reverse how they actually produced um, ammonia back in, in the 70s because they went away from that technology where they used uh, the, the water uh, power to, to make it, and, and they start using uh, nitrogen and other fossil fuels to make uh, ammonia, but now they're looking at how to reverse and start producing it. Of course, then the quantity will play a big role here, because at 
today there's not enough quantity uh, for supporting a, a healthy fuel supply. Uh, other battery solution, alternative renewables, uh, in general, less power usage on board a ship will also play a big role into it. Uh, LPG as fuel, um, easy to carry, reasonable, easy to get hold of. Um, LPG is basically LPG, so there's no big issues with uh, different qualities on it. Um, it gives a certain amount of CO2 effect, not very big. It gives a very good NOx and SOx reduction. Uh, it's kind of compliant with 2020. Um, and and it's, uh, it's decent amount you, uh, you have to uh, storage on board to, uh, to do the shipping. Uh, in addition, for LPG carriers, if you have a LPG fuel system, there's energy savings to be done if you do it correctly. Um, I'm just jumping this one. It's just uh, a little bit about what we are doing now. But uh, one of the big issues is uh, fuel tank options and how much you're going to carry. Are you going to uh, deep sea? Are you short sea? Um, are you going to take from your cargo? How do that, does that play into your charter agreements? Uh, Traditional LNG is used to use, the charter will pay for the LNG you are using, basically. In LPG, you are just transporting a certain amount of LPG, and that's how the charter contract is. There has to be made new kind of agreements around that on the charter side. Uh, basically, how we have the system delivering now, you, you either have a, a deck tank with separate low pressure fuel skid with a high pressure fuel skid for uh, the fuel was trained to man. And uh, one of the issues has been that this is liquid fuel. So you have return of fuel, same as you have on the standard liquid fuel. And you return then maybe oily fuel, maybe very hot fuel. And this has to be taken care of because you get flash points you get over critical points. So you have to cool it somewhere. You have to heat it somewhere. Um, you have to do it properly. If not, uh, you will get a lot of hiccups when uh, you do the operations. Uh, on the retrofit, we are doing our BV LPG now. We have this solution where we use uh, the fuel pumps in the deck tanks because it makes it easier for retrofit. We, we, we kind of have. Uh, we, we are making it possible to cost saving the, um, the retrofit, which is an expensive um, thing to do. Uh, there is elements with LPG, like uh, sand in LPG. There's water in LPG. Uh, it comes from caverns. Uh, there's a certain uh, um, amount of things you have to consider, which is not really considered in, in clean fuels. So you really have to do your due diligence on your fuel, and you have to build the system robust and uh, good enough for continuous operation. This is the skid, uh, which we are now producing. Uh, for both the test of uh, the parent test of the engine, the MEN engine, but also to go on board the ships for the installation in, uh, in the beginning of uh, 2020. Uh, the plan is that the first LPG vessel will operate on LPG fuel in April 2020. Details, I'm an engineer. So I like it, uh, but uh, it's all about combining uh, the systems. You, you have the fuel system now, but you also have the cargo handling system. How do you make it efficient? How do you do the relicification on board to make it less uh, power consuming? Uh, we assume that you, you can do 10, 10 20 percent lower power consumption on your vessel in total just having the additional future we add on by having LPG as fuel. So doing everything, 
you will get a very big uh, effect of, uh, of the power consumption, which is directly linked to the emissions, of course. Uh, operation is also going to be a little bit different because this is not what the crew is used to. So training, they have to customize it. How do you refuel? How often do you refuel? There's a lot of elements in it uh, that has to be taken into consideration uh, to make it efficient. Uh, and training of crew and familiarizing the crew of how to do this is very important. Um, another element that is coming in when, not only for LPG as fuel, but when it comes in new things, new technology, we have to enforce how we are doing automation on the ships. These things are going to run 24-7. Uh, on an LPG vessel, a uh, reliquification plant, for example, is a fairly manual operation. Uh, but the LPG fuel system is not a, cannot be a manual operation. It has to be running continuously. And then you have to put in the right elements of automation. You would like, as the ship owner, to also monitor it from shore to make sure that everything is operated correctly. Uh, so automation will also play uh, a big part of uh, the new technologies that are coming and the new way of running the ships. Um, in, in general, we, we uh, as I also mentioned before, you have to also automate the vessel to uh, say, when do you need to be at the port? Uh, how do you operate uh, the, the ship most efficient? Can you slow steam? All of these elements, which I believe that will play a very, very big part of this CO2 and, and emission talking going forward, because we also have to automate the vessel to make sure that we operate the vessels optimal and then lower uh, the power consumption and the emissions. Thank you. <laughs>